California. The Fresno Fire Department. Established in 1877, the Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. Today in Fresno, we are at Station 4, and for the first time in years, it's a combination station with both a truck and engine company, as well as the USAR and water rescue team. One of the door latches on the engine came off as they arrived on the last call. At Station 3, Mario a loyal mechanic for the Fresno Fire Department shop, arrives at the station four. Mario comes in to inspect the door on the rig. Mario pinpoints the problem. The mounting screws have been sheared off. All right, well, the problem is going to be to uh, try to get those broken screws drilled out. After examining the door latch, Mario pulls his truck closer to the bay for better access to his tools and parts. In order to fix the door, Mario has to find two screws to fit the size of the holes on the back mounting plate. I across some screws and I just I have a box that I put them in. The screws that we need. Mario uses one of the screwdrivers to keep the plate level for a perfect fit. That's just there. Nice and solid. Wow. Took a little extra adjustment, but uh, everything worked out. Mario's work is done. He heads back to the shop. At station three, crews from engine four and truck four train for structural support. So truck four and engine, engine four were together training on the uh, C shift here. We're working on our uh, emergency building shoring for uh, uh, collapsed buildings, partially collapsed buildings, so we can make entry safely as firefighters and search the structure. It's a 
pretty much following the RS1 curriculum, which is pretty much known nationwide, uh, Rescue Systems 1 curriculum and, and 2. Uh, so we use uh, lumber shores, and we did we worked on uh, shoring doorways, windows, and uh, doing a, a double post shore today inside the shore of the floor. It's midday when Engine 4 receives a call. The call was canceled. Engine 4 goes AOR. Late afternoon, a call comes in for a structure fire. Oh, wow. Looks like the turn will get us in there. Both Engine 4 and Truck 4 are out the door. Yeah, we got, we got a header. Do we? Yep. Buck showing, baby. Repeating residential fire for engines 4, 8, 3, trucks 19, 4, battalion 1, zone 53574, Hazelwood at first. RPs advise and attach the rods on fire. Multiple calls. Captain Dom Jewell and his crew on Engine 4 arrive on scene as first in. Engine Company 7, 9, and 3 arrive moments after Engine right 4. The, right. yeah. the fire is quickly spreading through several houses on this oddly shaped corner. One of the residents of one of the homes is dangerously close to the fire as he attempts to use his garden hose get out to put there, out hey. the fire. Get out! Get out of there! Get out! This is never a good idea for homeowners. Italian Chief French okay. arrives on scene and takes command. Uh, responding to a reported uh, commercial, or excuse me, residential fire, and in route, one of our crews arrived and they identified that they had a, a number of detached garages that were burning and a small residential structure with multiple exposure threats. 
And it's kind of in a uniquely shaped uh, plot of land because it was surrounded by three streets within a very short distance, approximately 100 yards. And within that, we had um, four, a detached four-car garage that was heavily involved. We had a small, approximately 800, 900 square foot residence that was uh, involved and had an established attic fire. There was an opportunity for an individual that I was working with, one of our firefighters, uh, to scribe, which anytime you hear the phrase scribe or you get to do the record keeping or the paperwork, especially in the fire service or any type A driven career, uh, Firefighter Griffith, or Griff as we call him, he took to that job, he did it well, and, and I think we all learned a little bit more about our jobs, our skill sets, and our, our discipline or our craft, if you will, that evening. Were, we just kind of split up initially. Um, I just reassigned truck 19. I had, no, I, I reassigned, I went through the ops and Division B, reassigned truck 19 over there to Division B so I could have my whole crew here. So we were split up. Several of the homeowners are still inside, and the firefighters are doing all they can to get them out as they try to grab what they can. My name is Donlin Jewell, the City of Fresno Fire Department. I'm a captain here at uh, Engine 4, at Station 4, stationed here with our truck company. We responded together out the apparatus bay here, and it was right down the street, less than a quarter mile down, the, down to the south so of us. More. They had a uh, heavy fire in a rear garage that, was, that had extended into one of the units. And so we had multi, and there were two or three garages, and so we had garages going with exposures. We also had a gas meter that, that had broken, uh, separated from the heat on the, on the connections there, and, and ignited. So we had that issue where we had to basically do exposure protection where we're protecting the unburned from the burning. So we were trying to extinguish the structures without extinguishing our gas meter because we're safer letting it burn. And uh, so that was kind of interesting to try to keep the hose streams off of, that's part of what I was involved with, was trying to keep the hose streams off of the gas meter because we didn't want it to go out. The firefighter on the interior of the home is about to put water on the fire from the burst gas line. The captain quickly takes command to stop this from becoming more dangerous of a situation than it already is. Who's in there? In, okay. Hey! Stop. Hey! Is that Creasy? I'm gonna go yell at them and tell them I'm not to quit squirting. I'm not sure what caused the fire, but uh, when we got over here, they had a couple hand lines down. Um, we're on kind of like a little funky triangle, so you can't really tell uh, which side's the front. Um, a couple hand lines down, fighting an exterior fire for the most part is what we were doing initially. I think it came from a uh, exterior uh, detached garage. Uh, when we came over to what's now assigned Division Delta, uh, there were power lines down here, and we had two houses that uh, had fire on the exteriors of each of them. The power lines down in between the house causing us an issue. Uh, Remove the fence a little bit, 
knocked down the exterior fire, got it, kept it out of the attic, uh, but also a gas meter is involved. So we've been trying to keep it a uh, uh, keep that burning. That way we don't have the raw fuel uh, leaking. And so we made it clear with everybody. Now we're just kind of standing by. We're going to wait till PG&E gets here to shut off the uh, electrical. Uh, that way the down power lines aren't an issue with us, and we'll be in there and be able to uh, shut off the gas. This fire has now engulfed three of the homes and it continues. The crew from Engine 3 inspect the garage that may have been the origin of the fire. The majority of the fires are out. The crews inspect the debris for any signs of burning embers. One small fire remains. After the PG&E technician examines the area, they give the firefighters the green light okay, to put it out. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, I'll probably put the fire out and then he'll shut it off. Uh, we were just going to shut it off. Oh, Are you going to shut it off? Yeah. Captain Tucker signals his crew to gear up. They pull apart the fence and remove a sheet of plywood to gain safer access to the gas valve. This fire is burning at a high temperature. They slowly bring in the hand line and open their fog nozzle. Continue to advance towards the fire. So we uh, then eventually did a uh, something I haven't actually done since rookie school, which is putting out a gas fire using a, a stream and moving, advancing it forward and reaching through the water with this wide fog water curtain and reaching through the curtain and then turning off the gas meter. So that was kind of neat to see that in practice. I hadn't seen that before. Operations Division Delta, gas is secured. The firefighters have defeated this block on fire. They begin the overhaul process. I don't know if you need uh, equipment or personnel. Uh, no, two, 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 two. Can you contact the investigator at the phone? Appreciate it, though. The PG&E crew evaluates the gas pipe for safety. My name is Steve Stowe. I'm a 15-year member of the Fresno City Fire Department. Uh, I became a firefighter because my dad uh, was a fireman for uh, Cal Fire. Um, way back, actually before I was born, I found out. And then also my uncle was a uh, battalion chief for uh, Cal Fire. So when I turned 17 years old, I was uh, able to become a PCF uh, down in Tulare County. And that's where I got my start. Mm -hmm. 
Mario from the shop has arrived in the air truck with the mounted Bauer compressor. Well, we're over here providing fire support for the fire department once again. Come yeah. on, fixing rigs and uh, giving out air. And begins to refill the air bottles on all of the apparatus. Fresno is a very busy department. Statistics shows that they have about three fires a day and is said to be the Detroit of California. Without this mobile air filling vehicle, it could quickly become a very dangerous situation for this city. Many times, the crews find themselves packing up from one fire to just rush to another. The captain on engine three uses his infrared camera to check for hot spots. It wasn't an overly complex incident, nor was it a, a significantly large incident. It was just one that uh, wasn't our typical, for lack of better terms, bread and butter fire. Um, so, guys got in, they did good work, and we got out, we got home. Okay, so we made entry, and the truck went and went ahead and, uh, and we were able to ventilate eventually, and it worked really well at that level, being able to work together as a team. Uh, and so just, it, it, was, it was like a well-oiled machine, which was nice to see again. Fresno was, you know, the department to work for. Uh, it was known for being busy, a lot of, uh, a lot of fire activity. And so in 1998, uh, I was on the list and got a phone call for a, uh, a job offer to work for the city of Fresno. So we're on the scene of our uh, fire this evening and now we're wrapping up. We did our overhaul and our salvage, cleaned up. We made sure there's no hidden fire in any of these three units. Now we're gonna go in as our final uh, duty of the day and do a little fire prevention and put a smoke detector in this old gentleman's home here um, just to make sure he's protected. The other unit has one. It's in working order, we tested it. So now we're gonna put one in. There's one uh, not in this, in this home. So we'll install a smoke detector and then we'll head on back to the barn. Engine four is released and one of the last engines to leave the scene. That's truck four. That's got to be. <laughs> uh. Oh no, it's fine. It's Engine four returns to the station and are ready to fight the next one because there is always the next one in Fresno.